In the final steps in this uh, chapter, we're going to reintegrate the cash flow analysis that we've done with uh, the net present value analysis. Uh, to start out with, let's look at some rules for depreciation. Now, before we even go any further, let me mention we're, we're interested in in this process in calculating cash flows. Now, you might recall depreciation is not a cash flow, so why do we care? Well, the reason we care is because depreciation does affect a cash flow. It, it affects the taxes that we pay. And so for this reason, because we're only concerned about depreciation because we are concerned about taxes, the depreciation method that we're going to look at is tax depreciation, not book depreciation. In your accounting class, you've probably had a discussion of the fact that you use a different depreciation method for books than for tax. In doing this cash flow analysis, the, the depreciation method we want to use is the depreciation method that the IRS uses in calculating taxes, so we're going to look at tax depreciation. In tax depreciation, assets are classified according to the nine different categories. And uh, those categories determine what rates of, of write-off, depreciation write-off, can be taken in every year. The system that, that's used is called the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, or MACRS. And MACRS makes reference in some cases, well, it, it does make reference to asset depreciation ranges, which the ADR method was the system that was in place before MACRS, uh, so there, for tax accountants that becomes important to some extent. Uh, what we're going to be interested in is just knowing how to apply uh, the MACRS depreciation. So MACRS, our nine different classifications are listed here. There's a chart in the, in the text that, that is identical to this. Uh, these are the nine categories. I'm not going to go into details. I'm a CPA, and I'm tempted to, to, uh, to say, well, you know, this is awfully important that you know each of the categories, because if you were taking a tax accounting class, it would be. Uh, but for us, it's, it's not really that important. We want to know how to apply this. Uh, we don't need to memorize uh, how these MACRS classifications are developed. The um, depreciation percentages for each of these nine are expressed uh, in a chart here in decimal form. Now, notice that not all nine are listed here. Only the, the first six are listed. Uh, in general, MACRS depreciation follows what would be known as a double declining balance uh, method that switches to straight line when that becomes a better method. Um, a couple of things to note because this may throw you. Let's look at the very first item, three-year MACRS. Okay, how many years of depreciation do you take? Well, lo and behold, the three-year MACRS takes depreciation over four years. How can that be? How does that make any sense? Well, the reason it makes sense is because the first year and the last year are considered to be a half year of depreciation. So if you look at that first year, you'll observe that the uh, depreciation in the first year is less than the depreciation in the second year. And that's true right across the board. For each and every one of these, you see that the first year, let's look at the 15-year item out here, that first year of depreciation is only about half of what the second year of depreciation is, and then it declines from there. And there's a big drop-off in the last year that you'll see in each case. So I just wanted to point that out. Even though it's called five-year MACRS, you're actually going to see depreciation occurring in six years. So let's consider a, a, an, an investment um, where we've purchased an asset that's depreciable uh, on the basis of five-year depreciation, five-year MACRS. So we're going to be interested in looking back at this right here, we're going to take that rate schedule, that depreciation rate schedule, and apply it here as item three. 
Now, we've got a $50,000 investment. We'll look across at year one first, so we're going to look straight across from left to right. In year one, the depreciable base is $50,000. That's what we've invested in the project. The depreciation rate for the first year is 0.2. We multiply those two together, and we get $10,000 of depreciation in the first year. In the second year, the depreciation rate is exactly the same. It's still $50,000. So we're now looking at year two, okay, $50,000. We have a new second year depreciation rate of 0.32. Again, we multiply those two together. That gives us the amount of depreciation taken in the second year, $16,000. Uh, $16, At the end of six years, because it's a five-year MACRS, we've got six years of depreciation. We're going to take those, add it all up. The total depreciation will exactly equal the depreciable base at the end of six years. Another thing we're going to have to be concerned with, obviously we, we care about depreciation because we care about taxes. Uh, the tax rates are subject to change, and um, uh, they in many cases change more often than depreciation does, then depreciation rate schedules change, although those change from time to time as well. They've been fairly steady for a few years, uh, but that certainly doesn't mean that they will be in the future. Tax rates uh, are, are very likely to change over any three or four year period. Um, the maximum quoted federal corporate tax rate currently is in the, the mid-30 percent range, Smaller companies sometimes pay lower rates than that, companies that have low, less earnings. Um, and large corporations that uh, have foreign tax obligations um, or that are subject to uh, state and local levies, and they, it says here special state tax levies, but in some cases they're not so special. They're just imposed uh, generally. They may see corporate effective rates for federal, state, foreign, everything combined uh, of 40 percent or more. Um, there's a great deal of variation in this. In fact, there are some companies that have foreign activities that seem to pay very low tax rates because they're spending a lot of money on tax planning. Um, so in each instance, when a company is considering a project, someone is going to have to inquire with the tax department uh, about what an appropriate tax rate is going to be. Uh, in all the examples we'll use, we will just assume that we've already made that inquiry. We know what the marginal tax rate is, and, and we're going to apply that um, in each case.